lenses and image formation. So we have three goals. We have, we're going to compare and contrast spherical mirrors and lenses. We will go over the basic equations we apply to lenses, and then we'll discuss the process of drawing a ray diagram for a lens. So think about any differences you can think of between lenses and mirrors. You might want to pause this for a minute just so you can come up with your own list. So here's one. Light reflects from a mirror, but light goes through and is refracted by a lens. Another one. Lenses have two focal points, one on either side of the lens. Mirrors only have one. And another one. Convex mirrors diverge parallel rays while concave mirrors converge them. In general, but not always, convex lenses converge parallel rays while concave lenses diverge them. How about similarities between lenses and mirrors? Again, you might want to pause the video here just for a minute and write your own list. Okay, so the equations we use for mirrors all work for lenses. Converging lenses are much like converging mirrors. They both converge parallel rays to a focal point. They have positive focal lengths and they form images with similar characteristics. Similarly, diverging lenses are much like diverging mirrors. Both diverge parallel rays away from a focal point. They have negative focal lengths and they form only virtual smaller images. Okay, so here is our thin lens equation. And of course, uh, drawing a ray diagram is a good way to get an idea of what's going on, but you can calculate things with a thin lens equation. And that can be derived from the geometry of similar triangles. Here's a nice mnemonic to remember it. If I do, I die. So very conveniently, it's the same equation we use for mirrors. And you can also rewrite it as di is do times f over do minus f. Do being the object distance, di the image distance, and f being the focal length. Now, the focal length is determined by an equation which is very different from the one we use for mirrors. For mirrors, it's just like half the radius of curvature. So this time, the focal length depends on the radius of curvature of both surfaces of the lens. And then it depends on the index of refraction of the lens material and the index of refraction of the surrounding medium. So typically, that is like plastic or glass for the lens, and that's immersed in air. So typically, that first bracket gives you a positive number. But in strange cases, you can get a negative sign introduced if you have the uh, medium a larger value than the index of refraction of the lens. Okay, but that's a bit unusual. Okay, so typically convex lenses do this, while concave lenses do that. So convex lenses, we call them converging most of the time. That would be the typical case of uh, a glass or plastic lens in air. And then you've got a diverging lens, the concave lens. Our magnification equation is exactly the same as it was for lenses. Image height over object height minus di over do. If m is positive, the image is the same orientation as the object. If it's negative, it's inverted. And if the magnitude of m is bigger than 1, the image is larger than the object. If it's less than 1, the image is smaller than the object. Our sign conventions, again, similar to what we did for mirrors. Uh, but the positive side is a little bit different. And the light defines what is positive for objects and images. So typically, we have the uh, object on the left-hand side and then the light goes through the lens and may form an image on the other side. Well, that would be the positive side because the light's going over there. Okay, so the left side's positive for objects, typically the right side's positive for images when we're talking lenses. That's not the same as what we did for mirrors. F, again, is positive for a converging lens and negative for a diverging lens. That was similar to our rule for mirrors. Okay, so when the image distance is positive, as it is in this top case, the image is on the opposite side of the lens of the object, and it's real, and it's inverted. If the image distance is negative, then the image is virtual, upright, and on the same side as the lens, of the lens as the object is. Okay, so a negative M means the image is inverted, as in the top picture. Positive M means it's upright, as in the bottom picture. And here's our typical 
method for analyzing lens problems. So and that means determining where the image is, what the image characteristics are. So we draw a ray diagram, draw it carefully. We apply the thin lens equation. And possibly we might need the magnification equation to help us with that. And make sure these first two steps are consistent with each other. What the ray diagram tells you should be consistent with what the equations tell you. Okay, so let's go over drawing a ray diagram. Okay, so three rays we often draw for lenses. They're shown here. And the first one in red is what we call the parallel ray. It goes from the tip of the object parallel to the principal axis. The principal axis is that black line that bisects the, the lens. And then, if it's a converging lens, that ray passes through the focal point on the far side. If it's a diverging lens, it goes away from the focal point on the left-hand side. Uh, the ray in blue just goes straight through the center of the lens, doesn't change direction. That is a, an approximation, thin lens approximation. But typically we draw it like that. And then the green one is kind of the mirror image of the red one. So it goes for a converging lens through the focal point closer to the object and then comes out parallel. And uh, it's a little bit different if it's a diverging lens. You have to use the focal point on the other side. So you kind of head off in that direction, then you come out parallel. Okay, so why do we draw a ray diagram? So we know where the image is located. But don't forget that all the rays that leave the tip of the object pass and pass through the lens will converge on the tip of the image, not just these special ones that are colored. Okay, and the reason we don't often draw those from the beginning is that we don't always know what those rays will do from the start. Okay, but after we know where the image is, then we know exactly what they're going to do, as is shown here. Okay, so that is all for our introduction to lenses and image formation.